I'm here with Jan from Pause Path. Hey, Jan. Hey, Craig. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good. So with 4th of July coming up, your blog is about how our pets deal with the 4th of July. I know it's very celebratory for Americans and all the hoopla and the fireworks, but anybody with a pet uh, knows that pets aren't too fond of the fireworks and all the goings on. And you kind of pinpointed a couple of things in your blog here that maybe we can get to. One being music, um, another flower essences, aromatherapy, and essential oils as being ways. So can you kind of flesh that out a little bit and a little way yeah. to add to that? Um I mean, I'll have to say that yeah, I'm just going to add in one thing. I'm a huge advocate of um, exercise for animals on the day of or around that time. I mean, that's I know that's key for my dog and my cats. You know, if they're tired, they're less likely to be phased. And I think no matter what you choose as far as like an add-on to that, because I think they all have their benefits, you know, don't like leave the house and not having walked your dog and then you know, get upset if they you come home and they're like, they've been destructive because they got freaked out by the fireworks or something mm -hmm. because it's asking a lot of them to sort of like not respond to that sound, you know, so exercise them as much as possible. Um, yeah, music is really um, calming to everybody in general. You know, we always hear sound therapy and all these different um, ways they now use things like sound therapy for, you know, healing a lot. And um, it's a really great way to calm emotions. And there are a few CDs out by um, a woman, and it's called Through a Dog's Ear. And the way the music is played is pretty much almost at this certain level, the certain pitch that is very calming to dogs. And um, I know I have a few sets, and she makes one, let's say, for example, with for thunderstorms, and she'll have classical music. And in the background, there's like thunder and lightning, like thunder. And then it slowly becomes louder and louder, and it sort of desensitizes the animal to that sound. Mm -hmm. um, it can be beneficial to cats, but I, I mean, I don't, my cats are pretty much not phased by anything. So I don't really, you know, I don't have much experience with it. Now, the thing about sound healing, I guess it's good to also help people understand what, what it is about the sound. And, it, and when we're talking about, we're talking about energy medicine here in, in all shapes and forms. I mean, uh, essential oils, aromatherapy, flower essences, but also sound and music is energy medicine because of the vibratory nature of the sound waves, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, animals in general are so much more sensitive to sound and vibration than we are. And we know that from their ability to sense when a storm is coming um, far, you know, far before we can even notice that anything is going to happen. Um, I think where their response to fireworks is much more not only the sound, I think is actually a vibration. I think it's like it's a jarring, right? For them, it's probably a jarring vibration. And they sense that not only in like the sounds that they hear, but also in the effects that it has them on them physically. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a construction project going on next door to us. And occasionally there is some, I guess, rumbling. Uh, and, the, and the cat will be aware of it way before we're aware of it. We realize, what's wrong with the cat? And yeah. it's so, wow, he, he doesn't like the vibration of the, of the construction. Right. And my dog will do it in storms, like with, like far before when a thunderstorm or whatever come, he tends to move um, into more like the center of my house away from all the windows and the doors, mm -hmm. more like in the in the in the center portion. It's always very interesting because all of a sudden he'll move and I'll be like, why did he move? And then all of a sudden a thunderstorm will come and I'll be like, oh, that's why he moved. Right. So so in, in one case where the, the sound could also be uh, troubling or difficult, the, 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 the vibration, the energy of that sound can be on one hand troubling or difficult, on another hand it could be healing and soothing. That's right, and if you choose the right sounds, um, it can be very calming and very soothing, um, very healing. I think that it's also a great thing for, um, for pets that have like separation anxiety, things like that, or to get to play music sometimes when you're gone really helps. Mm. Um, I've never done anything since, um, with them, but I'm assuming, you know, they make things like crystal bowls and Tibetan bowls and stuff, singing bowls. Mm -hmm. And it would be very interesting to see an animal's response to something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed when I just play music that we like here listening to the cat seems to come out and he wants to be <laughs> part of the scene and he's, That's right. he's liking the music. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so then when we go into flower essences, aromatherapy and essential oils, again, it's the same energetic theory 
of healing, except it's coming to through different senses, right? Yeah, it's coming through different senses. I mean, flower essences are very much on the energy, pure energy, because they have no smell, really. Um, they clearly um, really are the energy of the flower in a liquid, and they can have a lot of healing properties. They tend to be very mild and very gentle. Mm -hmm. And so they're, I like them because they're safe for anything or any, you know, any pet. Um, the flower essences can be applied topically. or You can even add it to like drinking water. And they make a number of different ones. And it has to do with the different flowers that are in them. And, um, but there are some extremely, um, I like uh, flower essences that are extremely good for anxiety, for being in large crowds, um, and things like that. And it's something that, you know, I have a few that I think are staples that I just keep in the house, like, you know, almost like a first aid kit of flower essences, one for digestive issues, you mm -hmm. know, things like that. But, and the one for anxiety for things like thunderstorms and just something good and easy to have on hand. Right. And now, you know, it's funny, you know, what, what home doesn't have rescue remedy in the cabin, right. you know, like you find even the, the most mainstream of people, somebody's got rescue remedy. And that's right. That's right. It's just, it, that is, that has become almost like you say flower essences and people say, oh, rescue remedy. It's become almost synonymous. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now aromatherapy. Well, a, a, well, a specific, well, we well, want the um, flower essences, specific ones. Do you think that could be helpful for calming the pets now? Yeah, there's one for anxiety. I like um, a company called Green Hope Farms. They're located in New Hampshire and they pretty much ship everywhere, but I've really liked their flower essences and they make one that's called anxiety, um, all different ones. Um, I find the one for anxiety really good. They have one that's sort of like neediness or sort of like, you know, constant clinging. Mm -hmm. And that tends to be sometimes good in large crowds, you know, where it sort of creates that little bit of separation and space. Mm -hmm. So those are the two for this situation, but they make them for multitudes and you know glad to help anybody if they need recommendations or suggestions yeah. now and now aromatherapy how, how does that play in oh aromatherapy well we all know that the sense of smell is just such a dynamic um powerful um sense um that um the sense of smell actually um the way the odor comes in actually um triggers certain parts of the brain which are um, linked to emotions and things like uh, memory um and I find that um, animals really respond well to essential oils and partly because they, um, and flower essences, I think any sort of alternative healing energetic modality because they're a lot more open energetically than we are. So um, I think that they respond really well. Um, it's very easy way to use, um, to do as with flower essences, they're very easy, easy to use. You can apply them topically, you can diffuse them in the air. Um, I like diffusing for animals that don't like to be touched, like cats sometimes where getting oils on them is sometimes not the easiest thing mm -hmm. to get oils on a cat. Um, I would say don't hesitate if you have essential oils, always, you know, really good quality is really important and don't hesitate to dilute the oils. I mean, their sense of smell is so much more powerful than ours is um, that, you know, they're getting, you know, their, their amount of smell cells that they have in their nose is probably trillions more than we Mm -hmm. have and so a little bit goes always a long way when right. using oils and some specific oils oh i really like frankincense um bergamot um lavender is always good for topical application um there are a few combinations i really like to um diffuse um one that's a, a more grounding blend has a lot of trees in it um one that's um just has a mixture of some really nice fragrances very calming very grounding very settling. Um, I would say try a few oils before, if you can, like tonight or tomorrow and Sunday before the fireworks, depending on your town mm -hmm. and when they have them. I'm not a huge advocate of leaving pets on 4th of July. I kind of feel like, you know, my pets tend to, I mean, my pets tend to be calmer when I'm around. So, um, and the last thing I do want to mention is actually the um, 4th of July, the day after 4th of July or 4th of July is the day that the most pets are actually lost. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. be because they become so like if they're home or if they're out and they're with you, um, they tend to want to escape the noise. Right. 
the it's a huge like strays like you know they where they just get lost or get out in the open and become unattached to where they're staying or dig under fences and so I tell people just be careful make sure you know obviously if you're home that's the best and keep them leashed and well leashed and also make sure if you do have a pet that they're obviously they have identification on them or they're they have chip or they have microchipped because it's a huge issue yeah now people who want to know more you're available for uh, consultations to work with people and, and their pets in their home uh, mm -hmm. And how does that work? Yeah, people can um, go to my website, go to the website, um, Paws Path, and complete the contact form. And then I'm glad to have sort of like an introductory um, sort of conversation, tell them a little bit about what I'm going to do, how we work. Um, they can either share with me an issue if they have something specific that they want to work with. Mm -hmm. And then usually I'll come up with a plan that sort of involves, you know, as much as I can recommend. Um, so it might be oils and flower essences, sometimes supplements um, that are for pets and uh, try to come up with a health plan. And sometimes for the owner, too, because, you know, heal the owner, heal the pet, you mm -hmm. know, so since, but it's, it's, sometimes it's a combination. <laughs> well, we'll make sure we have the links to the website where they can get all that information and they can fill out that uh, questionnaire on the website and they can uh, call you up and contact you for some counseling help. Thanks so okay. much. Have a great fourth. You too, Craig. You too. Hope your pets are well. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.